Hello everyone and welcome back to the Going Zero Waste YouTube channel. I'm Katherine Kellogg and today we're going to be talking about dealing with eco-anxiety. Eco-anxiety is nothing new, but it is something that is becoming more talked about in recent times. So eco-anxiety is basically dealing with anxiety, stress, panic, feeling sadness, fear. Oftentimes it can be debilitating when you think about the future of our world and the future of the planet, whether that's climate change, climate breakdown, and what possibly might be happening. But anytime you can feel overwhelmed and consumed with feelings about our future and the uncertainty of what will happen if humans do not act on this crisis, but most of the time I find that it is triggered by really devastating headlines. And I'm gonna read you a few headlines and at the end of it, you're probably gonna feel sad. So a few of these headlines would be unprecedented ice loss happening, that we have 12 years to make changes or we are headed for catastrophic breakdown. The Great Barrier Reef is dying and 1 million species are facing extinction due to human causes. All of these things can be really triggering and can be really upsetting, especially if you are trying to make changes and you want to make the world and leave the world a better place and you can be overcome with so many of these emotions. And so I just wanna give you a few tips for dealing with it because I have been there. I remember when I first started learning more and more about climate change and I started learning more about ways that I could be active as a citizen and learning of course more about all of the bad things that will happen if we don't act. And the first one is acceptance. And I know that that sounds absolutely crazy after having said all that, but you just have to accept that you don't know what's gonna happen, right? We don't know what the future holds and you just have to accept that you can only change your own actions. Now, of course, accepting it is not the same thing as just sitting back and saying, well, whatever happens, happens. Not the same thing <laughs> at all. You can accept that something bad might happen in the future or something good might happen in the future, but still work really, really hard to try and change or keep those results. So I think it's really, really important that we make that very big distinction. And something that might help you is the serenity prayer. I know that that's often said, I believe like in AA meetings, which is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So I know that for some people it's really helpful to you know, have something like a mantra that maybe you recite to help you remember that not everything is in your control. The entire fate of the world does not rest on your shoulders and your shoulders alone. Uh, there are things that you can change. There are things that you can do. There are ways that you can fight against what might happen, but just being able to accept that something is going to be different in the future and that you are going to change everything you can. And I find that personally to be something that's really freeing is knowing that, okay, something bad might happen and that's okay. That doesn't mean I'm not going to work to change it. The next thing is to get a new view. You know what we have a lot of? <laughs> we have a lot of post-apocalyptic imagery in the media, right? Uh, you know, books and movies. And when we think about the future, so often we think about this very kind of dystopian future because that's what's presented to us so many times. Very rarely do we think about the future and think, man, it could look amazing, right? Like how would it look if everything was run on renewable energy and instead of lawns, we all had gardens and we all shared organic food with our neighbors and how would it look if we as a society were sharing things with each other and if we could, you know, do everything that we talk about like in the zero waste movement, really going back to a more localized version of living, like how amazing would that look? How often do we see pictures like that painted of the world and how beautiful they could be? Probably not very often. <laughs> Most of the time when we think about it, it's very not good. So <laughs> one of the great exercises I think is if you're feeling really bummed about the future of the world, is to sit back and take a few moments to journal about like how amazing things could be. Because when you give people a very clear picture of what they're fighting for, people are gonna be more likely to do it. If, when people hear about the future and when they hear about fighting climate change, they often, you know, we're talking about surviving, 
we're not talking about thriving. We're talking about how can we survive? How can we adapt? How can we do this? We need to change the narrative and show people how they could be thriving in the future. This is how you could be living. It could be beautiful. It could be amazing. There could be so much going on that's not happening right now. And so I think if we're painting that picture for people, people will become more hopeful. People will be excited about it and wanting to move towards it. The third thing is to find a support system. So Many of us don't have a solid support system. We don't have a group of friends and family that are super interested in environmental issues. And you know, that can be really isolating and that can be really lonely. And when you are hearing about these articles and you are feeling overwhelmed about the state of our world, if you don't have that support system, it can be very, very lonely. And I definitely think the lonely you are, the more you will fall prey to feeling these feelings. And for me, they're most intense whenever I didn't feel like I had a good group of friends. And so, you know, of course, converting your friends is great, but it'd probably be better to find an already functioning support system. And I've got a full blog post on how to find an eco-friendly community around you and steps that you can take to try and build more people that understand where you're going, what you're going through and where you're coming from. I will link that below. And of course, in the corner. And then the last thing is simply to get to work. I find that one of the most, one of the best things to do whenever you're feeling overwhelmed is to funnel all of that energy into making something happen. Because when you are working to create change, not only within yourself, but also in your community, you can feel so much better about what's happening because you know that you are putting some of it in your court and you're taking control and ownership over it. And if everyone could take some control and some ownership, obviously the world would look vastly different. And I think so many people are taking control and ownership and it's amazing. The results have been amazing. I mean, we have you know, Loop is a new thing that's coming about that's transitioning so many mainstream products into reusable and refillable packaging. We have so many different cities that are declaring climate emergencies and creating task forces to try and tackle this problem. We have so many different cities and states that have declared, you know, to be carbon neutral by X date, by 2030, 2040, and 2050. We have all of these people working to transition the energy grid and working on creating less waste and less plastic. And Global awareness right now is so high and I think that we can just keep going and I have so many action items that you can take and a whole bunch of blog posts that I'm going to list down below, how you can host a community cleanup, how you can get involved in your local government, how you can start making these changes happen and how you can be an, an activist in your own town. So if you are feeling sad and despair, I hope that you will be feeling a lot of hope after listening to this video. And one other thing that I also do and I share it on my channels on Instagram and it's called Good News Friday. And what I do is I round up just a really great, awesome piece of positive news that's happening. And reading positive news is so, so, so helpful because it is so easy to find the sad news and the bad news and the negative news. I mean, like everyone wants to report about the coral reef dying. Uh, very few people want to report about all the good things happening, like, you know, Milan right now is wanting to plant 3 million trees. There's only 1.3 million people in Milan. They're planting on average 2.5 trees for every person. That is awesome. Robert Downey Jr. has gone full Iron Man and has assembled a coalition of scientists to help reverse climate change with technology. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. California has banned single-use plastics. New York is working on legislation to ban single-use plastics. We have Chicago who is declaring carbon neutrality by 2040. Costa Rica is going completely carbon neutral. It is amazing so many amazing amazing things are happening you just have to know where to look and it's really hard to find that and you honestly have to weigh through a lot of really negative news to get to the good news so if you just want to skip all the negative stuff then please check me out on instagram i'm always reporting on that stuff so i really hope that you enjoyed this video and i know it's really long and really rambly so thank you for sticking with me with me and i will see you guys next week with a new video bye